Yay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, today we have Raj from Tech Systems. Um, he has a new title since I last um, spoke with him formally. And so I'll let him introduce himself and what he does um, with Tech Systems. Hey guys, how are you? Hopefully you can hear me all right. Um, calling in from my uh, earbuds here so that way it's a little bit more clear, I think. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I did this uh, last year with with you know, in, the, in the class, and it was uh, it was a good time. So just happy to be back. I know these are some different times, and, and we're doing this virtually instead of in person. But uh, happy to be here. Uh, good to see all of you that are on. Um, as Lena mentioned, I do work for Tech Systems. Tech Systems is a technology services company. Um, we have a hundred offices nationwide, <clears throat> and I uh, work here in our local San Diego office. Um, currently working from home, but uh, we have our office in La Jolla. Um, tech, uh, when I say technology services, I know that could be a million different things, but uh, one of the largest services that we offer is technology staffing. So uh, we work with a handful of companies in a variety of industries here in San Diego. So uh, we work with technology companies, Intuit, Sony PlayStation, ServiceNow, uh, Walmart Labs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in the healthcare industry, we work with Sharp, Scripps, uh, Rady, um, Dexcom, and then so on and so forth. Thermal Fisher, I mean, there's a handful. And then in the government uh, defense space, we work with uh, your bigger uh, integrators like SAIC and Lidos. Um, and uh, I now recently focus more in our data analytics practice but um, nonetheless, still affiliated with all of the industries and uh, still, you know, I recruited for about four years prior to that. So I have a good knowledge of what the market looks like from somebody like yourself looking to enter the market here in the next few years. I can give you some insights on the companies, on um, kind of what the, the trends are as we see them today, uh, and really just kind of how to put your best foot forward. I know there's a handful of questions that uh, Lena's outlined. So um i can just take those as they come and then when we open it up the floor towards the end i can answer any specific questions that you guys have thank you and i'll also ask if um you want to if um anyone who's not raj um, wants to turn off their um computer for now um and so that way um we'll, it'll help us save a little bit of bandwidth and then um once we go to questions and of course you can turn um, it back on um, so, can you tell us, you told us a little bit, but can you tell us a little bit more about Tech Systems and some of the opportunities that are available? Absolutely. So, a um, little bit of history on, <clears throat> sorry, a little bit of history on Tech Systems. Tech Systems has been around for uh, almost 40 years. Uh, they were started out in Maryland, Baltimore, um, and uh, started by actually two cousins. And we've grown, like I said, to 100 offices. We're a five and a half billion dollar company and we focus in everything IT related. When, it come, when I say IT related, I mean, um, you know, we do staffing personnel. So could be staffing software engineers, could be staffing project managers, could be business analysts, could be uh, infrastructure um, uh, individuals. We also do co-manage projects. So companies could ask us to come in and really own a, a development project or an initiative for them, business initiative for them end to end. Um, so that is our business model. What makes Tech Systems unique, um, from my opinion, uh, is that we're a very relationship-based company. So the people that we work with, the managers we work with, the individuals we work with, it's on a very relationship-based um, kind of setup. So we try to get to know all of our consultants. We try to get to know all of our managers on a personal level. So that way when we're making the match, uh, it's, it's a lot easier and people are being set up for success for the long term. Yeah. And um, can you outline a little bit, um, as someone who's worked from the recruiter perspective, um, some of the education, training, and skills that you look for, um, including uh, maybe more of those measurable skills, those technology skills, as well as some of the soft skills? Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, I know last year when I talked to this class, a lot of uh, the individuals were uh, looking to go into computer science or get some kind of computer science related background. 
Um, if you're looking to go into the software development route, then of course having a degree in computer science is critical. Um, now, I've seen individuals that maybe are doing something ancillary to software development. Maybe they're, they're going to go into project management or they're going to do something more in the like UX, UI design space. And they might have, uh, you know, a minor in computer science with a major in, in uh, human cognitive science or um, art design. I've also even seen, uh, for, especially for the design and, and uh, development, UI development aspect. Um, but having that degree is critical. I mean, that's, that's definitely, I think, because it's such an in-demand skill set, it is something that helps you stand apart from others trying to get in that maybe you're doing it from a self-learned capability. Um, being self-taught is not bad. Being self-taught is 100% uh, an option. I've, I've hired a handful of great engineers that were self-taught, but um, more often than not, it's, it's the education piece does play a role. Um, if we're talking about you know, specific tools or technologies, that's really just dependent upon the company or the project that, that you'd be interested in, in pursuing. Um, San Diego tends to have uh, a good variety of technologies, but the ones that stand out most are, um, of course, the Java technologies, um, C Sharp technologies, uh, that would be .NET, .NET Core, um, Microsoft Stack, um, as well as uh, there's been a lot more Python coming into, into the environment because of the, all the data analytics and data engineering that's kind of been popular as of the last couple of years. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Lena, but that would be kind of a high level just from technology stack and, uh, and what the, I think the precursor to getting into a company would look like. No, that definitely helps. Thank you. Um, and then just looking a little bit, I guess, deeper from that perspective is, is there um, someone who was interested in computer science or information technology? Is there um, a way that they can, that individuals can start strategizing, especially while they're in school right now? And what would that, um, what would a couple of effective strategies look like? Absolutely. Um, I think there's no better time than to start early. Uh, a lot of the, the better candidates that we work with are very passionate about uh, technology, whether it is software development or technology, some, some piece of technology are very passionate about it. And I would recommend, um, you know, doing things on your own, like personal projects, um, you know, joining, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like hackathons, thank you, sorry, hackathons. Um, I was going to say hacker rank, which is not anything but a, but a actual assessment. So don't worry about that, but hackathons, um, you know, different user groups, different meetups, just being able to put yourself into position where you're being able to practice some of the tools and technologies that you're learning um, and really just kind of get a hands on feel for what you're doing. Um, that, I think that is, that is a key critical thing as well as having internships. If you can get an internship while you're in college, um, it does two things for you. It gives you actual insight on what a software company looks like uh, inside, right? How do they operate? What are their day-to-day -day look like? Uh, what are some of the expectations that, that you would have put on you if you were to enter that type of uh, role full time? Um, and then it also gives you an opportunity to kind of figure out, you know, what technology stacks or what, what companies would I want to be a part of and work with? Um, so I, I definitely say internships and really just kind of being passionate about your, um, your interest in technology and pursuing it in, in whatever aspect that you can. Yeah. Um, and can you talk a little bit um, about maybe salary ranges, especially specifically looking at um, an associate's degree versus a bachelor's degree? And I know you kind of mentioned um, self-taught in there as well, but, um, you know, if you could just look broadly, um, again, if someone were to um, be more, go pursue an associate's degree um, and then versus the bachelor's degree level. Absolutely. So uh, the funny thing about uh, salary ranges is that it's actually changing and evolving because of our current pandemic. So now that everybody is technically or most people are virtual, uh, the talent pool has opened up because companies can now look for individuals across the nation. Um, what it's doing for I, I don't think it's changing the entry level salaries too much. But what it's doing is I think it's opening up an opportunity for individuals that are coming into the space to have an opportunity to work in 
companies and environments where they normally wouldn't get the opportunity because most of everyone is remote. Now, um, being very specific in terms of what that um, salary might look like, um, I can speak to San Diego specifically because I deal with uh, engineers and, and technical individuals in this, uh, in this marketplace. Um, for somebody coming out of uh, college with like an associate's or self-taught or a bachelor's, you know, the, the, the nice thing about um, the technology space, it's more about the work that you do than, than necessarily the, the foundation that you have. So if, if we were looking to hire somebody um, that was self-taught or somebody that had a, a bachelor's or associate degree, if they had the same technology skills and they were able to come in and make the same level of impact to the business, um, they can command the same uh, rates and salaries. So um, now, you know, having a degree does give you a little bit of a leverage to say, hey, look, I've completed X, Y, Z amount of coursework. Um, and so therefore, I think I should command a little bit higher of a rate, which is, is it, it is so in the market. Um, but uh, with, with what I've seen um, in the technology space, um, the salary ranges are higher than most um, entry level positions that you would get into. Um, I think the, the starting point for most of our software, software engineers um, is somewhere in the range of like 50 to 60 grand a year. It's kind of a starting salary for a software engineer. Uh, for your network, network engineers, it's a little less. Um, your um, maybe help desk or IT support is, is maybe closer to 35 to 40, maybe 45 grand. It really just depends on what company and what the skill set is that they're looking for. Um, but I would say the range, if I had to put a number on it, would, would be anywhere from 45 to 65 grand uh, for somebody coming out of college and, and with a associates or a bachelor's looking to get into a technology type school. Thank you. Um, and then you, you talked a little bit about the entry level um, positions. Can you um, talk a little bit more about what it would look like to um, grow with the company, specifically with um, tech systems. So if someone were to start off in entry level, are there opportunities for professional development or what opportun additional opportunities are there to grow with the company? Absolutely, so tech systems being a, you know, staffing being our core service, we'd like to work with individuals that we can work with throughout their career. So we might help you get into an entry level job and you might be there for a year or two um, just to learn some skills and, and kind of gain your, your repertoire. And then you, you know, you reach out to your recruiter again, you say, Hey, I've been here a couple of years. I'm looking to make a change. Can you help me find my next opportunity? And we're, we're, we love to do that. We love to have continuous employment and be your number one partner throughout your career, because um, then we can go to our clients confidently and say, Hey, we've worked with X, Y, Z person in their last job or in their last two jobs. And we can vouch for their skills and their abilities to do the job that you're looking to get done in this job. So um, there is a lot of room for growth. And within the technology industry itself, things change so rapidly. I mean, I, I don't know if there's an engineer or technology personnel who doesn't change positions, whether it be internally or externally, at least every two years. I mean, the way that technology changes and, and you know, there's new technologies and there's new methodologies and new philosophies that, that are always being um, kind of brought up to the surface. And to stay marketable and to stay relevant, uh, you have to be continually learning. You have to be continually pushing yourself um, to grow not only with the company, but with the trends that are in the marketplace. And so having a good recruiting company or a recruiting partner that can give you insights and say, hey, the trend right now, like for me right now, the trend is a lot in data, data analytics, data insights data engineering. Um, there's also a big push for, you know, software engineers that have a good understanding of the cloud, right? Understanding how to do cloud de deployments and microservices. And I know throwing a lot of buzzwords out there, but just being able to stay on the current trend and having somebody kind of give you the insight on what that looks like. And, and you yourself taking the initiative to study and learn, um, read up on, on articles and, and news, news information that is out there for, technology professionals like ourselves, um, I definitely think that there's, there's so much room to grow uh, and, and having a good recruiting partner or agency to help you with that is, is critical in my, in my opinion. Thank you. Um, 
we'll actually probably start wrapping up the, the formal part and um, I'll open the floor to questions. But um, before we do, is there anything else you would like to share about um, tech systems? Um, you know what, we, um, we are just big on, on community and building our relationships, like I said. Part of the reason why I love doing this is because I feel like I get to give a little bit more insight and give a little back a little bit more uh, to people that I wish I had insight to when I was in college. Um, and so if you have any questions or if you're just curious on what positions are out there or what the market looks like, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, you can go to our website, you can find us on LinkedIn, you can find us, uh, you can reach out to me directly. I mean, I can give Lena my, my contact information and I'm happy to connect you with a specific recruiter that might be able to give you some insight. Um, but I think that it's never too early to kind of start figuring out what it is that you want to do once you finish school and get into a, a, a career and having somebody kind of give you the, the guidelines or, hey, this might be a good route, uh, makes it a little bit easier. So uh, feel free to reach out. I mean, we're, we're here to help and we're here to, uh, it's a free service. I mean, we, we don't charge any of our consultants uh, a dime. We charge our clients, right? When we place you in a job, they pay us. So it's not like it's costing you anything for our knowledge and we're happy to share it. Thank you. And thank you everyone who is joining us through the recorded session. I'm going to stop, or Alex, do you wanna um, stop the recording? Oh, um, yes, yeah. Thank you.